What's up everybody, this is Adam with Everyday Retro Gaming and we're going over Motorstorm for the PlayStation 3. Motorstorm was announced to the world with a controversial trailer in 2005. Even though the game never hit the target render, is it still worth a playthrough? Let's find out if it is. A year later after that trailer was released, Motorstorm was then released as an exclusive for the PlayStation 3 back in December 2006. People were very upset at the gameplay because it didn't compare to the trailer released during that E3 2005. And I remember game trailers Jeff Keighley drilling Phil Harrison about why it didn't look like the trailer. I remember telling myself why would anyone think that it was anything other than a CGI trailer, even if it was said that it was running on PlayStation 3 hardware. Even with the trailer gate issues, the game did deliver on the fun factor. There is no real deep story for Motorstorm, just a bunch of crazy people holding a giant rave while racing in the barren desert around Monument Valley. As long as the story doesn't get in the way of the racing, I don't really care what it is. I'm looking at you, Need for Speed. The gameplay for Motorstorm is where it really shines. Each set of races is attached to a ticket. The more races you complete within a ticket, the more points you get, which unlocks more tickets for more races. There's such a large variety of vehicles to choose from. We got bikes, ATVs, buggies, rally cars, racing trucks, the reliable mud plugger, and the heavyweight champion Big Rigs. Depending on what car you pick depends on which areas you stick to on the track. If you love the larger and slower trucks, stick to the low muddy paths. If you like the faster, lighter cars or bikes, stick to the high ground! As trying to drive in the mud only slows you down, let alone making it hard to control. 10 seconds after the race starts, you're able to turbo boost your way to victory. Be careful not to spam it as you'll blow your vehicle up. If you don't patch the game, there used to be a bug where you could boost pretty much forever. Remember people abusing it online. Not really enjoyable. Motorstorm starts off pretty easy as you try to learn the tracks and try to figure out the paths that are best suited for the vehicle, but the difficulty quickly ramps up to what might be pushing more frustrating than enjoyable. Besides long load times, which did get better in patches, is the fact that the AI rubber bands super hard, which is understandable because they wanted the high action gameplay, but it's so hard to get into the lead, let alone hold it. Motorstorm isn't a typical racer, so I've learned over the years of playing that it might not be the best idea to get first and try to hold it, but better to defend yourself against that overly aggressive of AI and take first place at the last second. I feel that all the vehicles in Motorstorm control really well, besides the bikes. Screw them. You are able to make use of the six axis controllers to steer your vehicle, because why not make a hard game harder? Strange enough, I think controlling the bike is easier with the six axis controller. There is some free DLC still available if you go online and download the patch to Motorstorm. You can only patch Motorstorm by booting up the game and trying to go online. Online doesn't work, by the way. One major flaw is that you're unable to create your own races. You are stuck sorting through the cards with hopes of finding a track you like with a car you like. Even though this game is coming up on 14 years old, these graphics are pretty dang good. No, they didn't hit the CGI target render or whatever, but it's still impressive to look at. There are times a frame rate stutters during a wreck, but for the most part, it runs very stable. For me, the most important thing in a racing game is the music you'll be listening to. I feel Motorstorm's soundtrack fits the game perfectly. It's all rock, metal, or electronic. There is no country, pop, R&B, or rap. Sadly, you are unable to add your own soundtrack, which I always hoped they would patch in one day. All the vehicles sound as they should, and there is a very distinct beeping right before you blow yourself up by turboing too much. With these final thoughts, I feel like Monostrom has some high goals that might not have all been met, but what came out of it was a unique racing game that set the foundation for the rest of the Motostorms that were yet to come. With that, I feel that Motostorm is definitely worth a playthrough. Maybe not a full first place every track playthrough because it's super crazy hard towards the end, but if you're like me, and did do it more power to you lunatics unite all right everybody hope you like this retro review like subscribe hit the notification bell if you want to see more of this content stay safe stay retro i hope you find the games you're looking for and we'll see you later have a good one